tactical command. We are inbound, on final approach, I say again, on final. response team repelling demonstration. So let's get going. If you direct your attention to the first deck, please put your hands together and welcome your host, Sergeant Eric, the Irish Hand Grenade Osborne! Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to day eight of the great New York Thork State Fair. <laughs> we appreciate you good folks coming out, especially those of you that sat through that dog show for no other reason than to secure prime seats for this, the best show at the exhibit, guaranteed not to give you fleas. We are SORT. SORT is the tactical element for the New York State Police. As such, we conduct all those operations you would expect a SWAT team to conduct to include high-risk felony warrants, drug raids, barricaded subjects, hostage situation, dignitary protection. However, we also perform a few tasks you wouldn't necessarily associate with a SWAT team, such as search and rescue to include high angle repelling and rope rescue, which is what we're gonna demonstrate here today. So without further ado, let's bring the guys down and introduce them. Up on the left side of the tower, hailing from the frozen tundra of B Troop along that Canadian border, Trooper Brandon, the Norseman Strader. <laughs> on the right side, you've got our resident softball ringer, Trooper Robert El Capitan Burke. Down here on the ropes, direct from division headquarters, you've got Sergeant Derek, the dangerous man, Serza. In that top window, spinning our beats, fresh off his European tour, where he played clubs from Milan to Minsk. He is available for birthdays, bar mitzvahs, and of course, bachelorette parties. Trooper Brian DJ DeRoshe! Up on the left side of the tower, he has mastered every discipline in the tactical world. But as a true renaissance man, he also serves as our team's tailor, cobbler, and sawyer. He re recently purchased half of a 1986 dump truck. Not sure the specifics on that transaction, but that's a true story. Assistant team leader for North Central, Sergeant Ryan, nice dumper, Ordway. And on the right side, you've got the Central Regents, paramedic, and my primary care physician sporting his tactical Chuck Taylor knockoffs. Very nice, Brando. Trooper, Brandon, Dr. McSteamy, Madigan. While they work their way back up that ladder, I'm gonna go over a little bit about what it takes to become a member of SORT. First off, you have to be a trooper for a minimum of two years. Quite the process in and of itself. Then after that, we'll occasionally put out training announcements. We'll have tryouts, and if your chain of command feels that you deserve a tryout, they'll let you come to the three-day selection. After that, if you pass it, you'll go to the one-week, correction, two-week phase one, which is our true selection. If you make it through that, you may or may not be invited to the six-month phase two, which is our actual school. We have an attrition rate over 80%. 
Once you get to that six month school, three weeks of the school are dedicated to rope work. We do rappelling, we do raising and lowering systems where we get injured or stranded people out of precarious situations, and we also do helicopter operations where we do hoist work, fast rope, and rappel from heights up to four times higher than this tower. Each guy's issued his own individual harness. On that harness, the front of it, you're going to see what we call a figure eight. This is our descent device. The rope is fed through that. That top hand on the rope is just a guide to keep us upright. The one down here by our hip, that's the money maker, that's the brake hand. So as we bring it away from our hip, it allows that rope to freely flow through the device. That's when we let gravity do its job and we refer to that as letting her eat. As we bring it down to our hip, it puts friction on the device, slows, and eventually stops us. But telling you is one thing, showing you something different. So if you look up top, we've got Brandon and Rob, we're gonna come down and demonstrate. All right, you saw how they came down. As they approach that roof, they go ahead and feather that brake, and come down and stop themselves. However, a couple of things are gonna occur as this fair goes on. One, the guys are gonna to wanna to start entertaining themselves, and they really get ripping down these ropes. Two, these ropes are gonna develop hoops and twists. If you're letting her eat, you got that hand open a little more than you should, and you hit one of those loops, that rope can hop out of your hands. If you lose your brakes on the throughway, that's a bad day on the road, right? If you lose your brakes up here, that's a bad day on the ropes. But that's why Sergeant Sirs is here. He's not trying to be rude or antisocial. He's not trying to showcase his back with his well-defined lats and traps. I gotta go to the infirmary and get this guy a band-aid because he is cut. All right, it went okay that time. As our senior most team guy and our resident ropes guru, he has an oh so important yet not at all glamorous job of rope safety or belayment. If one of these guys coming down loses her brake hand, Derek's gonna pull on that rope, putting friction on their device, slowing, and hopefully stopping them. But again, telling you is one thing, showing you something different. So to do me a favor, one of these guys is gonna help me out. They're gonna take a few steps backwards, they're gonna get a running start, and they're gonna throw themselves off of that roof with no hands on the roll. They're gonna come hurtling towards Earth, an incredible rate of speed, accelerating at 9.8 meters per second per second, until at the very last moment, Sergeant Surza, if he is physically able and so inclined, will use his cat-like reflexes and raw power to engage that belay, stopping that member mere moments from certain death or at least a sprained ankle. Ladies and gentlemen, you paid for your whole seat you're only gonna need the edge. This part's gonna be awesome. Who's going? Oh, guys, come on. I built it up, we're fired up. Somebody's gotta go, come on. All right, guys, let's, let's handle this like adults, all right? Ready? One, two, three, shoot. All oh, rock, beat, scissors. Nice victory for Rob. Brandon has had a rough go of it. So now as Rob comes down like a gentleman, let's go ahead and hear for Brandon for volunteering. So like I said, Brandon's gonna take a few steps back. He's gonna get a running start. He's gonna jump off, approaching terminal velocity or early retirement, till at the last minute, that belay is gonna get yoked and he's gonna get saved. It's gonna be awesome. So let's count, I'm gonna count him down. You ready? Three, two. What's the matter, Brandon? Oh boy. As a police officer, I'm trying to pick up on body language. This is not promising. What's the matter, bud? Oh. All right. No, that's not Derek. Derek, what are you doing? A target. That's not promising at all. I don't care if you have one bit. All right. Hi, sweetheart. How are you today? What's your name? Grace? What a lovely name. Grace, did he tell you what to do? He, he, he looks like he gave you extensive instructions. I'm not surprised at all. All right, I'll give you the advanced course. Not a big deal, okay, Grace? He's going to jump off the roof, and then you just pull on the rope, okay? Like on the first bounce or the second bounce, it doesn't matter. It's, it's not going to be a big deal. He's going to land on the ground no matter what, all right? What do you think? You ready to go? She's got suns out, guns out. I like the intensity. She's taking it serious. You ready? The insurance is okay. Yeah, that's fine. We'll send you an edible arrangement. It'll be all right. <laughs> Derek, you want to hop on there? Help Grace out? 
Grace, you're going to be his backup, okay? Is that cool? He needs to help. His, he's, his belay success rate hovers around 64, 65%. So this can only serve to help. All right, what do you think, Brandon? Folks, let's give him a little bit of encouragement, all right? Help me count him down from three, ready? Getting closer. Outstanding job. For those, oh, hold up. Hey, Grace, outstanding job on that backup belay. This is from our PBA, one tactical bear. All right, outstanding. That vest is not rated, all right? It's not no ballistic protection. Usually, at, at this point, I say we try to get our guy a little bit lower each show. We, uh, we continue on that path. Labor Day is going to be a real nail biter. All right. So you can see the gravity doesn't take an instant off. It's very easy to get twisted up and into a bad spot. But if you get twisted up, as long as you keep your head, and more importantly, as long as you keep your brake hand, you're going to be okay. So to demonstrate up top, we've got Ryan and Brandon who are going to come on down. All right, so you saw those guys come down to that same standard seated hip rappel that we've been using this whole time. But now they're gonna transition that brake hand from their right to their left. This is gonna allow our guys to go ahead and invert. So now even though they're upside down, as long as they maintain that newfound brake hand, they're not gonna smash face first into this beautifully manicured turf. This is what we call the commando crawl. It allows our guys to see where they're going before they present their feet or other body parts through a window or opening. But once they've gone far enough and seen all the feel they need to, they can go ahead and revert, reassume that brake hand, and come on down. Complete with a superhero landing, ladies and gentlemen, the invert. Folks, you'll notice a reoccurring theme out here, and that is safety. We're dealing with heights, we're dealing with extreme angles, we're dealing with hard and sharp edges. It's inherently dangerous. People, if they're rappelling, rock climbing, or even hiking, can become injured or stranded, end up in a position where they can go neither up nor down. We have to have the means to go ahead and get to those people. Ladders aren't necessarily going to reach high enough, and helicopters can be counterproductive. Those rotors don't do our ropes any favors. So if you look all the way up top, we've got Brandon, who's going to come down and start this demonstration. Say Brandon's working his way down a clear, a sheer cliff in either the Adirondack Park or perhaps Ithaca, because it is gorgeous, and he gets himself to a spot he wants to be for a minute. He takes that rope and wraps it around his eight, not once, not twice, but thrice. This is called a tie-off. Once he's tied off, Brandon can go hands-free. He can invert, he can literally and figuratively hang out. He can get a cell phone out, snap a selfie, post it to his MySpace page. Anyone else running MySpace? I'm with you, all right, cool. But say he's hanging out there and a rock kicks loose and hits him in the head. At this point, I'm gonna need a little bit of audience participation. Can I have somebody come forward? Anybody, anyone? Come on out, guys. Yeah, yeah, don't worry about, I'm not gonna call on anybody. We're not that organized. Just step over that rope that's there for your safety, ignore it. Okay, come on over, grab yourself a water balloon, get right up underneath them, and do them a favor. Go get them, sir. Get right over there, guys. Get up, get right up on them. Somebody's got to fire the first shot. Yep, let it eat. There we go. <laughs> Exploded in your head. The arm speed's too powerful. Oh, that's cool. That hit my, my laptop, I bet. Nice. <laughs> Go ahead. More. More. Oh. 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 Been hit by the spray. How many water balloons we got? Filled a bunch up, huh? Oh, that's a good one. And grand finale. All right, folks, let's hear it for our rocks. Nice work, guys. Nice work. That tears it, dude. Next year, lawn darts. Way more accurate, a lot more kinetic energy, you know what I'm saying? We don't have to fill those up between shows.
All right, so Brandon's been knocked unconscious, but we can't leave him up there. We've got a lot of time and money invested in him, and we've grown somewhat attached to him. So if you look all the way up top, we've got Rob. Rob's going to work his way down his line. He's going to latch hands on Brandon and hopefully bring them both down to safety. Come on down, Rob. Oh, uh, all right. We choose all our own music out. Here's a bold choice. Rob is obviously comfortable in his own skin. What's up, bud? What? Oh, this is your jam. Did you not make this musical selection? You, are you sure you didn't pick it? Maybe we picked it for you, huh? Suits the mood? Can you come down to this or no? What do you need? Metallica. Uh, DJ DeRoshi, my man's not going to come down to that. Our tactical diva says he needs something a little more manly. You got something, brother? All right, let's see what he's got. I think DJ DeRoshi got it. He is receptive. Big fan of the Weather Girls. He has both their album. As Rob shimmies out, shows us things we cannot see, you're going to notice he has a different piece of equipment on the front of his harness. He's not running an eight. He's running what's called a brake bar rack. That's going to allow him to take additional weight onto his system. In this case, that additional weight is going to be branded. Once he gets to a position slightly above Brandon, he's going to perform a tie-off. Lest he fall to the ground and become another casualty in need of rescue. Once he's tied off, he reaches for that blue strap that's a pick-off strap. And he uses a partial inversion and his impressive wingspan, thank you, Vanna, to hook into Brandon's setup. Once he's hooked into Brandon's harness, he's going to use those bulging biceps he somehow shoehorns into an extra medium t-shirt to pull Brandon up. You notice that Brandon instinctively reaches for Rob's hips and legs. We're a very close knit team. At this point, we ask no photos be taken. Thank you. You see that Brandon's line's begun to go slack. That's an indication his weight has been removed from it. Now Rob is working to secure all his gear and totally free Brandon from his line. In this procedure, all of the steps have to be performed in proper sequence. If Rob gets them wrong, I think he'll be okay, but Brandon's day at the fair will definitely be ruined. A little human airbag action. Now Rob's going to undo his tie off and hopefully lower them both safely to the ground. Looks like he nailed it. Ladies and gentlemen, the pickoff. All right, folks, we've showed you basic repelling. We've showed you safety measures in place. We've showed you a very small percentage of the rescue work that we are capable of. However, there is also a tactical application to this rope work. Say, for example, if there were a bad guy creeping around these fairgrounds, he snatches up a kid, went up into this building and barricaded the door shut. Horrible choice of location on his part, but I digress. So he's barricaded that door shut. And he feels real confident we're not going to be able to get in there. Unfortunately for that bad guy, the special operations response team doesn't need to come in through the door. We can come in through the window. But before we do, we count on all our partners. The men and women in the gray uniform at Stetson, the road troopers, they're the first responders on these hairy incidents. They make sure to get everybody to safety they can and try to contain it. Then they call in their supervisors, investigators, negotiators. They call in other special operations such as SCUBA and even our friendly rivals in the canine unit. Some of us and some of the canine operators are trained on drones, like you've heard buzzing above you this entire time. They give us real-time, actionable intelligence on what we're going into without putting us in harm's way. However, when we use any kind of technology, we trust but verify. There is no substitute for the human eye. So if you look all the way up top, we've got Ryan, who's ready to come down and run the recon. Ryan lands ever so gently so as not to notify anybody of his presence. Works into a commando crawl, and there appears to be a guard dog. Hopefully they don't alert the homeowner. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Ryan, get out of there, buddy. She seems, it seems aggressive. 
Oh boy, Lance right on. Get out of there, right? He's gone fetal position. That's a bad sign. Oh, swipe left, brother. You gotta get out of there. It's over. It's over. <sighs> Occasionally, after a very intense call, we'll need counseling. Nick Ryan's in that boat. As he moves down to that bottom window, he's telling me that's where the hostage and hostage taker are. You're gonna see him reach up for a canister on the back of his harness. That's a noise flash diversion device commonly referred to as a flashback. It's going to emit a bright light and loud noise that distracts and disorients the suspect long enough for us to seize the, seize the initiative. All right, it looks like Ryan's ready to deploy the bank, and it looks like we're ready for Brandon to effect the rescue. Brando's in the window. There appears to be a tussle. That's a lot of bad guy, that's a big one. There's an edge weapon involved. They're letting out a lot of pent-up aggression. <laughs> He's got some flying elbows. The knife's out the window. Oh, Brandon's hammer fist him. This is very extreme. And then, oh no, 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 no! Folks, I am very sorry you had to witness that clear violation of New York State Police policy and procedures. Brando, I know he came at you with a knife originally, but then the knife came out, and to be honest, the big thing in the manual is you cannot throw a pedophile out of a second story. <laughs> no, sorry. Manual clearly states it has to be the third floor or higher. <laughs> second floor is not getting it done, you know what I'm saying? Brando, how's the kid? Remember the kid? He's why you swung in there? It's Timmy! Timmy's okay! Another... Oh, and his brother Theodore! Oh, a double save for Brandon. Let's hear it for Brando. Did that bank guy learn his lesson? Folks, hopefully you can tell we enjoy coming out here. We love working on this great tower, interacting with you good people. It represents a nice break for us. However, at the end of the day, it is a serious business we're involved in. If you look along that roof line, you've got four sets of numbers. Those are the shield numbers for Michael Strike, Ross Riley, David Brinkerhoff, and Joseph Long Lombardo. Those four men were operators on our team who died in the line of duty. They made the ultimate sacrifice serving the people of the state of New York, and we think it's those guys that deserve a real round of applause today. You guys have been a fantastic crowd. We really appreciate you coming out. Feel free to come forward after the show. We'll answer questions, stickers for the kids, post for pictures, tasteful of course. We got the PBA and the Trooper Foundation over here for all your state police swag. And the museum and the interactive exhibit are both very interesting and air conditioned. Thanks again for coming out guys and enjoy the rest of your day at the great New York State Fair.